Robert Daly is director of the Wilson Center's Kissinger Institute on China in the United States. He joins us following a recent trip to China to talk about what he learned about that country's interest in the United States uh, presidential election. Robert, welcome back. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Good to be back. Always a pleasure to have you here. And so let me start with the general before we get into election 2016. Sure. In general, how interested are the Chinese in U.S. politics? I would say highly. These are really international elections, uh, so they, they follow them closely, and they're really very sophisticated observers of the elections. Now, I thought that I was going to have to spend a lot of time, for example, explaining the Electoral College, and I found in four different Chinese cities that they knew all about that. They got the red state, blue states. They knew they had wow. to count states. So sophisticated, practiced observers. And, and this goes beyond just the uh, the political class. This is oh yes, this was I did a, a two week tour sponsored by the American Embassy, uh, speaking with general audiences as well as with journalists and America watchers, all three. So yes, even the general audiences knew what they were talking about. So what are they asking about or talking about in terms of this race? Well, of course, they're highly self interested, as are all observers. So the key question always came down to what would a Trump or a Clinton presidency mean for China and what will their policies be? Uh, as has been widely reported, and I confirmed this in, in my travels in China, there's a lot of uh, doubt about Clinton's intentions toward China. And this goes back first to 1995 when she spoke at a UN women's conference outside of Beijing and very famously said that women's rights are human rights. And she's been focused since on human rights issues in China and in particular on uh, international civil society and the importance of it and the role it can play in China and the Chinese have heard that. Last year when five Chinese feminists were disappeared, uh, secretly arrested because they had been planning to put stickers on Chinese buses opposing sexual harassment on buses, they were arrested and candidate Clinton tweeted out a note about the Chinese leader Xi Jinping that said this was shameless. Those slights get heard. So for those reasons, and also because she's seen as an architect of the American rebalance to Asia, uh, the Chinese are somewhat wary of a Clinton presidency, and they wanted more information about that. Does she have a high level of relationships with people in China? She has long been involved, uh, even before she was Secretary of State. Uh, so yes, she has been, uh, she, she knows most of the uh, major players even in so international they're affairs. Of her. They're wary of her, now pushed, uh, there were strong suggestions that some of this was also related to the fact that she was a woman, and some Chinese said they, that Chinese leaders dislike the same messages coming from foreign men, uh, but they will respect messages they dislike coming from foreign men if it's in that strong tone. They're a little bit more averse to that. Again, these were Chinese critics uh, coming from a woman, so it's a little bit of all of these. I, I would say that some of the more sophisticated observers in China, while they worry about President Clinton's what they describe as anti-China tendencies. They also recognize, and they brought this up, that she's probably far more predictable than Donald Trump would be vis-a-vis -vis China, and that is a value for China. They know Hillary Clinton, they know her values and dispositions, and again, this is a mark of their sophistication. They know who her people are. Uh -huh. They kept asking about the Tuan Dui, the advisors of Trump and Clinton. They know Clinton's advisors, they don't know Trump's. Well, uh, about Donald Trump, I mean, let's not be coy about this. Uh, Donald Trump, controversial would seem to be a totally inadequate word right. when talking about the world's reaction to Donald Trump, let alone in the U.S. What is the Chinese reaction? Well, to there are several minds. Uh, in, gen in most of the fora that I participated in, I would have people vote. Yeah, I said, you're interested, you don't get to vote in the real election, let's vote now. And it tended to favor Trump about 60-40. In talking about We're that, in Europe, Trump is in single digits. Is in single digits. Uh, Trump's support seemed to be of three types. Uh, a small percentage of the Chinese simply liked the bread and circus. Uh, what outrageous thing will he say today? They enjoyed following They're Trump. They're enjoying that, just as sure, entertainment. Sure, they liked that. Uh, another group genuinely likes the strongman style. This is part of why Xi Jinping is popular, why Vladimir Putin is popular in China, why we see, for example, Serbians expressing interest now in Donald Trump. They like the strongman style. The majority of the professed interest in Trump, in my anecdotal, not scientific experience during this trip, uh, was not really interest in Trump, but it was a commentary on U.S.-China relations. When pushed, people would admit that they thought that Trump would weaken the United States and be bad for the United States in ways that would be good for China. Sounds like the Russian position. Very much like the Russian position. And then the final Chinese view, which is, I think, the, the optimist's view, was that maybe Trump would turn out to be a transactional 
president who would be interested in negotiating with China on the, on the basis of very clear interests. The Chinese are highly accomplished negotiators. They fear nobody in this regard. And that if Trump, the businessman negotiator, showed up, the, this optimistic but minority Chinese view was, this is somebody with whom China could, could deal and with deal whom we'd have a common language. What, uh, do, uh, have you, did you encounter any discussion or any thoughts on uh, Russia's involvement in the United States election through cyber uh, security and all those other Those things? stories were starting to break a little more toward the tail end uh, of, of the trip that I took, and so it, it didn't come up. Uh, no, uh, there was some reference to prior elections uh, in uh, President Bill Clinton's second election. There had been some uh, illegal interference from uh, Chinese in the United States were giving money to the campaigns. Any story related to China is remembered there. Would, would Russian meddling be a, a motivation for China to be more engaged in the U.S. election? Even no, though that's been again, a taboo they, they, type of uh, No, endeavor. China's been fairly hands-off. And, they, and they've been through this cycle many times, such that, for example, since I start, started paying attention to China in the late 80s and started working with China, China has become much more sophisticated, much less sensitive to anti-China rhetoric mm -hmm. on the campaign trail. They've seen enough cycles of candidates criticizing China uh, either to win votes or because they are quite sincere in their criticisms of China, and then seeing presidents who come in who tend to share in the consensus that both Republican and Democrats have had of trying to have constructive engagement with China. So they've become somewhat inured to that. Uh, their skin is a little bit thicker. The narrative forming now is that the, the hill gets steeper and steeper for Donald Trump in terms of that electoral college you mentioned right. earlier today. Are, are the Chinese involved in the U.S. election on that level of prognosticating or looking at the numbers? Uh, they were very interested in that, and so uh, I referred them to a number of, of sites so that they could follow this day to day. There, there is certainly interest simply in the horse race side of this. So, I so think Nate have, Silver has a following Nate, in it was Beijing the, as well. It, it was, I said 538, here's how to go, here's how you use it. Uh, a final thought, Robert. Uh, anything that surprised you about the discussion about the U.S. elections? Or... Yes. Uh, the, compared to these discussions in the late 80s and early 90s, there was very little interest in democracy per se. No admiration for the system, no questions about, you know, why can't we have this? Uh, nobody giving speeches about how wonderful participation was. It really is a different political culture. When uh, I was in Nanjing in, uh, earlier in this century watching with Chinese graduate students the John Kerry, uh, George W. Bush debates and watched all of those debates with a Chinese audience and at the end asked them what they thought of this exercise, expecting that they would be impressed by how open it was, that the fact that ideas were aired, the fact that criticisms were, were given, that people had to defend their ideas. That wasn't what I heard. And what I, what I heard in that election was similar to what I encountered as a matter of political culture on this trip. What they had said was, the President of the United States is the most influential person in the world. Because of this open, critical vetting process, whoever becomes President will have been so insulted, so demeaned by this process that they cannot possibly have the, what they call Wei Wang, sort of the majesty mm. to represent America accurately. This is demeaning for everybody in a way that harms the United States. Now, that's a very Chinese idea about the leaders needing to almost transcend personality yeah. and to be revered in order to be able to get things done. So now we are still looking at a very different Barack political Obama culture. wishes we were a little more like China in that regard. Right. Well, and speaking of Obama, I, a final, final question. Will the, do the Chinese, will they miss Barack Obama or, or will they be glad to see him go or are they agnostic about it? I don't that? think any of us know the answer to that question until sometime the first year of the next administration. Uh, Com there, compared to what? Yeah, right. And so I think that there, his name came up and there was a sense that he had been a little bit weak on the other hand, the Chinese seem convinced, and properly so, that whoever the next president is, they will come in with a more hardline attitude toward China than did President Obama when he first became president. Well, Robert, as always, thanks for a fascinating look inside the mind of uh, China on the U.S. election. Thank you.